Welcome to the Deadly Addictions channel. Hello everyone, I'm going to be talking about a movie called The Outlaw Josie Wales. I am a big fan of westerns ever since I was a kid. I had all the fake Winchesters, the plastic belt hol holsters, always been fascinated with the guns of that age, the history. I even have gone back and watched all the old TV shows and movies around the genre of westerns. I mean, everybody and everything you could think of at some point I touched on. The uh, classics, the John Wayne movies, but for me, Clint Eastwood's westerns are the best. And the Outlaw Josie Wales stands at the top of my list of favorite movies of his. If it wasn't jumping around the couches with the fake Winchester and the guns playing make-believe, Cowboys and Indians. I was mesmerized watching on TV the old black and whites, going through my youth, uh, finding little gems here and there, some great TV shows. And Clint Eastwood actually was in a old TV show back in the day, uh, I think it was Rawhide. So it was... I think it was released in 1976. It was directed and starring, starred by Clint Eastwood. I don't know if it was one of his first. It was adapted from a book, uh, an author, Forrest Carter's The Rebel Outlaw Josie Rails. And it was republished as Gone to Texas. Apparently the movie did well. I don't know if I came across a low budget sequel. I don't know. I don't know how long ago it was. It was pretty bad. Although it stars a great actor, Michael Parks. The Outlaw Josie Wales has everything for me. It has such a depth of character, the tone. Although I'm a big fan of the No Name series, the Fistful of Dollars, A Few Dollars More, The Good, The Bad, The Ugly. Those are great amazing movies this one was just at the prime of Clint Eastwood's career and it had subject matter it was really really intricate deep heartfelt you you got this turmoil of this man uh you know getting caught up in this I think it's a little bit after the Civil War, because it, it's all those themes are in there. And he's a farmer um, who wants revenge for the murder of his wife and son by a band of Union uh, military guys. And it's just epic on so many levels for me. I watched, I've probably watched this one more than any other Clint Eastwood Western. Although, Pale Rider, The Unforgiven are up there. I even like some of the crazy ones, Two Mules with Sister Sarah and things like that. He's throwing dynamite. But this movie really cuts to the heart of the matter of the times. It tells a really cool story with this setting that is you know, eye-opening and shocking at the time. Growing up watching it. Um going back to it so many times and as you're learning history and going through life because it came out when i was about fucking you know five years old watching it more and more and going through life and seeing the connections and it was done differently uh there's some great scenes with the actors and actresses chemistry is great i think uh, he went on to marry Sandra Locke, who starred in it. But you got Chief Dan George, Sam Bottoms, Geraldine Kearns. I think there's a unique time where the right people are in the right spot. 
they get these actors and actresses and it, they make it work. Um, you pick the right people and things just fall into place. This is one of those movies for me. And like I was discussing, it has a backdrop that's uh, pretty epic. You don't see it much. The communication with the Native Americans is unique. There's a moment in this film that stands out and gives me chills. It makes the hands hair stand up on my arms. And it's when he's negotiating with the local uh, Native American tribe. And it's just a no-nonsense bare bones, deep, raw conversation that is just epic. And the character he plays throughout it, you see it building up the the loss, the um, the grief and the terror of what's going on, his determination. He's just an amazing force of nature. I almost like to think of it as the prequel to Unforgiven because you can see he tries the life again. So to me, in the Unforgiven, he's he's trying it again. He's getting another wife and a family, and you know, the wife is dies of an illness. He's got kids to feed, and here comes a bounty, you know. And Joseph Bills has to go at it again. I've described in some of my podcasts creating or adapting the second edition Dungeons and Dragons rules to make a gunslinger campaign. And I did a lot of research for that. I fashioned my character after Josie Wales. Uh, I set it in a time of, uh, you know, the just amalgamation. There's just some, uh, you gotta play loosely with the rules when you're making a campaign, but for the element of the guns, the bullets, the caliber weapons, what would be the attributes and skills you would have in certain classes like gunslinger, soldier, bandit. Um, anyway, westerns are just one of my things I really love to watch when they're done really well. The Outlaw Josie Wills doesn't let up. It finds its groove and keeps it moving. His acting has never been better in these type of movies although you can see the achievement he made with the unforgiven and even pale rider i think his legacy is cemented in a movie like this though where he's you know really in his prime and on the cusp of doing so many great things and he's got to take this part of Somebody who actually has to side with uh, for a time, I think. It's a portion of the beginning. Where after this happens to his family, he sides with the Confederates. Um, to get back at the Union, but that falls apart, sort of. And he, you know, the movie kind of grounds him in finding a, a woman and a family or people in need. And then he decides that he's going to risk it in a sense for these people it's such a great movie it's got such iconic moments on every level this works for me it holds up amazingly well better than most of the other ones if you go back and the much joy as i get from the original or the older um movies he did even like hang em high and uh like I said, the, the Fistful of Dollars type movies. The element of this is grounded and done in a in a way it wasn't done before. I don't think, well, for me, you know, obviously it's subjective, but going through life and, you know, becoming a teenager, revisiting it, um, looking for the book it was based on, finding a pretty bad fucking sequel. But the Outlaw Josie Wales will always hold up for me. The story is done great acting the shots it's i don't know if it's one of his first director debuts but some some is telling me it is but i don't know uh 
I think it had a nomination for music for award. And I think it has its sort of anti-war theme. And it's this man's journey who is just nothing but hate and revenge. And he has to kind of ground himself again. And uh, it's really a captivating movie for me in a lot of ways. Revisiting it just always brings me joy. Just watching it. Getting that Western kick out of me. Sometimes I get in these grooves and I got to play my gunslinger campaign or I'll write an adventure for it. There's a portion of certain times of the year where I'll just binge watch old um, Westerns. I think the last one I watched was, uh, it was a, um, it was about white herb or something like that it's black and white it's really good i piece some of the adventures together from some of these movies just the plots and the settings and this one has them all i think it's a must watch in my opinion if you're a fan of westerns clint eastwood just shines in this movie on a lot of levels it might not be it's um a flawed finished product like the unforgiven but to me, The Unforgiven doesn't have the elements that this has. It's just a more direct focus uh, story. So in another way, I would say this is some, in a way sometimes better or more enjoyable to rewatch, if that's a better way of explaining it. Although, you know, I watch The Unforgiven, Pale Rider so much. I've got tons of box sets of uh, DVDs. I had VCRs back in the day. I think there's just something about westerns that get me there's a charm to them a piece of history and when they're done well like this it just makes everything so much fucking more enjoyable the outlaw josie wales clint eastwood directed and starred in watch it check it out everybody be well i'll talk to everybody soon